Hello everyone and welcome back to Vitruvian Art. Today's tutorial for you comes from my sketchbook. And I did this piece um, over the past weekend or two and this was just a huge, uh, just everybody loved it. Um, if you are looking for the bow tutorial it's on my patreon i will leave a link for that in the description but this is the gem we're doing today and i hope you enjoy it so it will come out a little bit different just because we're working on white paper and we're not working on tone to tan paper which is one of my favorite papers ever but that's okay um let's see our colors are um ivory which is your second lightest in your polychromos or whatnot, um, if you're following along. If not, use white. It won't really matter. It's mostly for, and you could also use a light gray if you wanted to use a light gray. That would work as well. Um, it's mostly just for the base color and to help blend things. So, and then I have violet which is just my lightest purple, really. Um, mauve, which is a dark purple. And then I have dark indigo for most of my going into my shadows. Can't really see those, can you? There you go. And then we have cobalt blue, and I thought cobalt blue would be a good match for all of those little veins and stuff that I put in there. The original one I did with the Spirier Farben pencils or whatever because I was sitting on the couch and they were available. So that's what that is. And so I don't have exact matches to what I used. So let us begin with putting down a base of our ivory. And I just want to go over about half to three quarters of this just to give it a base I find that it's just so much easier to color onto something that's already there basically um, that way you don't have as many inconsistencies in the coloring itself as to whether you're color coloring over already put down pencil or whether you are coloring over um, just the plain paper. So, that's a little bit of the base. And I want to start going in with the violet. Ah, got something in my eye. And of course, starting around the edges. And with this one, it's very soft and very bloomy. So we don't want to go around all the edges and kind of Bring it in very, very gentle-like. Remember to use very, very light coloring. Very light layers so that we can build them up correctly. It's just easier to blend them that way, honestly. If you use just a whole bunch of light layers instead of going really heavy with the colors. If you want to hold your pencil like way back here, if that makes it easier um, to get, just remember to get light pressure, you can do that. You can do it with the side of your pencil if you want. For me, I know how to do the light pressure and holding it way back there is weird for me. So... You can also practice doing light pressure by um, getting a real, real sharp point on something that's really soft, like a Prismacolor, and coloring with it and not breaking the point, like making a serious effort to color something in and not break any of the point on it. Um, if you do, you know you're coloring too hard. Like Get a long point like this on it and don't break it. Um, on something that's much softer than polychromos because polychromos you can push pretty hard before they will break and I do mean like really pretty hard okay, 
I'm just kind of working around my reflected light here. I really want this part to be smooth, so I'm going to totally cheat and uh, use my um, mineral spirits to uh, blend this out real quick. I had to grab a clean little paper stub, get my mineral spirits that I have in my little jar. As you can see, it just melts just everything together. I just want it for that really smooth base. Just like that. And we're going to go in and work some more of this violet around the edges. And still using light layers, it just looks a little bit darker because it's still got the mineral spirits on there. They dry really, really quick though, especially when you use a paper stump to put them on. want to go all the way around here purple is one of my favorite colors my all-time favorite is blue as everyone pretty much knows but I do really really love purple I wear it a lot Getting up here, switch to our darker purple, which is mauve, mauve, and just go around and start bringing down our edge a little bit. We want it to be nice and dark up here so that we get that dimension into our gem. Your edges are so incredibly important. If they don't curve down, it doesn't have that same pop that it needs to have for a gem. See, so just going down, getting that color into the edge, just very, it's important. And since we have kind of this glow going on, I'm going quite a bit farther down than I, than I might normally with my shadow here. I'm going to go ahead and smooth this out again because I want to. And it's okay if there's, you know, some in there because we're going to give it lots of texture. Okay. That's looking about right. Yeah, as I compare it over here. Go back in, darken some of this up again. Now I have the dark indigo over here. And we can use that to really enhance some of the shadow if we want. But I think we're good right now. So 
So what I want to do is start bringing in um, our cobalt blue cracks. Yeah, cobalt blue. And we're going to go, I mean, just like really crazy with these. So, I mean, just do as many of these as you want. I love doing cracks, especially when they're like really, really crazy and everywhere. And there's no right or wrong way to do them, honestly. Although, I do think most of the time it is best to keep like the main cracks all the way from one edge to another or touching an edge. But that's, that's depending on the gem. It's depending on what you want to do with it. I like to make all these little pockets. Go really, really crazy with them. You want that nice sharp point so that you can get lots and lots of crevices and cracks and such in your gem. I like doing little Y shapes or like things that I think look like vines maybe. I don't know. I just like doing them like that. I think it looks it's fun and it's organic and it's just kind of whatever. All right, like that. Um, let's see. Any others? Maybe I want to put one like right across here. Do I want to? No, I want to leave it. Maybe I don't know. We'll just do one like right here. All right, that looks good. Okay, so what I want to do is go in and start with a really, really light hand. Um, and we're going to give some shadows and color to some of these lines. And it really doesn't matter where. I'm going to do a whole bunch of it. But just going in and, and giving a bit of color and shadow to some of these G giving them by doing the shadow you give them dimension and I kind of want that look gives more depth and interest to your gem because it's all like a diamond it's it's got inclusions you know flaws in the gem and that gives it you know character interest because it's not perfect. As you can see, I'm doing like a whole bunch of it up here because I can't see it as much. And you could bring in as many colors as you wanted, honestly, doing this. You could do like these and then you could do like some green lines put in some of those do some like like aqua greens reds popping out of here you can do whatever you want what do you think that looks good i think that looks pretty good That looks good. Alright, so we're going to take our cream. We're going to kind of just go over some of this and just blend a whole bunch of it. We want to kind of, if we can, mess up our lines. Not, not mess them up, but like blur them maybe a little bit. Kind of fade them into the stone. You could do that with mineral spirits as well, but I kind of wanted to boost the vibrancy of the color of the gem 
So I want to do the ivory, not cream, ivory. And if you don't think that it's really blended enough, you could go in here with this, which is going to bring in some purple if you haven't cleaned it. Which is honestly fine with me. Gives it more shadow in here. And then if you want to go back in and like redefine some of these. Just kind of like find some little junctions. And redefine them. Just like that. And then let's go ahead and we don't need to use the dark indigo, I don't really feel. You can if you really, really, really want to. But I think that my mauve is my dark purple is dark enough, I think. Oh heck, let's do a little bit just for fun. Just on the edges. That looks pretty, pretty good. I like it. You like it? I like it. Okay. I think we're just about done. Definitely, though, definitely need us some highlights. So, I'm going to grab my white gel pen. Um, the one I've been using most lately is the Uniball Signo gel pen. I get it in broad. And that's the one I use probably the most often <laughs> right now. So, um, I want to start it up here. And we want our highlight to follow the edge of our gem down this way. Bring this one over here to a point. So it's like a little wedge of light. Kind of color it in. We'll give it a little bit of a secondary part right here. We'll give it some nice little that's around the edge because you never know where there might be shine otherwise. And there we have it. A pretty little gem. I might have to go in and clean this up a little bit. It's a little bit messy. But other than that, there we go. I hope you have enjoyed this and I hope you make some pretty gems and you tag me and show me and put it in your latest gem coloring book that you've gotten so i'll see you next time bye